Tenemos la oportunidad de dialogar muy brevemente por cuestiones de tiempo con Naomi Klein, periodista canadiense, autora de libros emblemáticos en el momento actual del mundo sobre la crítica a la globalización. Yo quisiera preguntarle, Naomi, vemos hoy eh, pues que parece que los gobiernos no son confiables, no lo son hace mucho, pero ahora casi incurriendo en acciones un poco fuera de sentido, de locura. ¿Qué papel puede tener la gente? ¿Qué, qué nos toca hacer? ¿Qué sugiere usted que podamos hacer como sociedad frente a esta pérdida de sentido de los gobiernos? So I think the most important thing in a, this moment is for there to for for, for people to come together um, outside of just the issues that they may them they may be most focused on, most passionate about. Because I think there's a lot of fragmentation um, in in social movements uh, and not enough communication between issues. You know, people who are focused on economic justice and people who are focused on environmental issues maybe don't speak that much to each other, or people who are focused on the rights of migrants. Um, uh, we don't talk about the role of, uh, of, of trade, the role uh, of extraction in driving migration enough. Uh, and, and really having, a, I think it's incredibly important to have a coherent story um, of how we arrived at this moment how all of these issues are interconnected. They, they may seem to be um, separate, but they're actually part uh, um, of a web and, and many of the same forces that are causing economic inequality are the same ones that are causing uh, um, environmental devastation. We need to see those, and violence of many, many kinds, right? So we need to tell that coherent story about how our issues are interconnected, and we need to provide real alternatives, uh, real solutions. Um, that are themselves um, intersectional, integrated, so uh, solutions that f fight pollution, uh, that bring emissions down, fight inequality, um, address deep racial wounds, um, and I think it's possible to do this, and this is the, the work that I've been involved in in Canada, is sort of trying to map what uh, what that progressive agenda could look like, because I think in, a, in the moment we're in right now with Donald Trump, it's forcing everybody into resistance, just saying no, right? But we're, and that's important, we have to say no. <laughs> um, but even if we were to win every, every no, every defensive battle against Donald Trump, we would still be in an incredibly dangerous place, economically, socially, um, and ecologically. And there would, we wouldn't be in a situation where somebody as, dangerous, absurd, um, uh, and hateful as Donald Trump could win an election in the United States, even if he didn't win the popular vote, unless there was a crisis, unless, unless there was, um, he, you know, a tremendous pain to exploit, which is what he did. Uh, so the problem is we don't have um, alternative political parties enough that speak to that pain um, and that actually provide real solutions and um, what we're seeing around the world is that when you run a weak, centrist candidate against a hateful, far-right candidate or campaign, the center loses. Um, there has to be a real progressive alternative. ¿Y es, ¿Eres optimista de que pudiera ocurrir un diálogo más productivo entre las organizaciones de la sociedad civil? ¿Ves que vamos caminando hacia allá? Hay, hay... Well, I think if there's one thing that um, we can, I think a best case scenario is that Donald Trump acts as a catalyst, acts as a wake-up call. Um, and I think we're starting to see that. I think we are starting to see people moving out of their own particular issue, you know, the huge women's march, for marches, for instance. You know, many, many men participated in them. Um, and there was, um, there was a willingness to make connections between um, the attacks on immigrants and the attacks on Muslims, um, between war and the violence, violence against women, and, and to, to try to have a more holistic analysis. Um, and I think in a moment like this, people do realize that if we stay just in our own little box, we'll never win against a force like this, against the forces we're up against. I would also argue that there needs to be much more of an internationalism. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the internationalist spirit of the left, you know, it, it has been lost to a large degree. 
um, and we need to get that back. Maybe less in Latin America. There, there's been more of a, a continental, uh, continental cooperation. But um, you know, I'm worried. I, I'm worried that we that the left is not international enough in this moment. You know. Vas a escribir yeah. de esto pronto? Yes, sí, yeah, I'm writing about this now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Gracias, Naomi. Okay.